Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Steph Mischuk with Killer Sites and Other Sites. So I got a question put to me by somebody, and I thought it was a, a pretty cool question. And I did want to do some uh, documentation work that I had to do uh, because it's pretty lame stuff. So I decided I'm going to do some vlogging today. Well, right now. So the question was, Stefan, could you make a video about the future of the IT industry? Many people say that programmers are going to disappear pretty soon as artificial intelligence will be able to solve programming tasks. What is your opinion? Um, I'm not an expert on AI, artificial intelligence, but from what I understand, there's still a long way to go. Um, they still have problems evaluating sentence structure. Uh, so to be able to come up with complex code to solve problems for people uh, it'd be very difficult because it's i could just it'd just be a nightmare setting it up imagine you got you got one coding problem where you want to you know you want to do some asynchronous programming so you pull out node and javascript for instance or you want to do a web app and you you got django some people want to have django apps they got rails apps they got laravel apps symphony apps they got java spring apps or maybe they want to do iot programming internet of things where you have very specific uses for um, the thermometer you want to you want to you want to uh, automate. There's too much variation right now, you know, in terms of coding, in terms of app development. I think that, that I think that AI will will be will be a long way away, at least a decade or two before I think it could actually take over from start to finish. You probably see AI or a component based coding become more prominent as it is now. It's it's changing. And it's in place now. Uh, think about it. I remember back in the 90s when we used to develop web apps versus today. We used to work on really basic infrastructure type of code. Like we used to come up with our own frameworks. We used to come up with our own database abstraction layers. We used to come up with our own UI widgets. I remember a friend of mine on one particular job worked like a week or two. Just creating a uh, a date picker app widget, you know, for uh, a web app, you know, a date picker. Now, you know, now with HTML5, you know, ch you know, input type date, you know, that's it. Uh, or jQuery, if you want to even go more pr primitive. So uh, I've seen an evolution over the last 20 years where you've seen the role, not the role, but what coders are specifically coding change from what we did in the past. And in fact, in some ways it's simpler, in some ways it's far more complex, uh, that's for sure. Like in the old days, a lot of people developed apps with very, you know, they, they would just roll out their own structure. They would come up with it and you'd have real messy apps, that's for sure. But these days to get into like web app development, you have to at some point, uh, especially when you get out of the basics, you should be learning some sort of framework. So if you're Python, it's Django, PHP, it's Laravel, Symfony, or maybe Zend. If it's uh, Ruby, Rails, uh, Java, it's Spring, etc., etc., etc. So in some ways, it's more complex today. In some ways, it's simpler. And uh, I imagine you're going to see the same type of evolution in coding over the next uh, 10 and 20 years, you will see the changes occur based on what uh, people demand. So I, I would imagine though, if you do get AI, and AI, full AI comes about, I don't know, it's 10, 20 years, uh, then yes, then they would be able to replace not just coders, everybody. You couple that with robotics, and you couple that with uh, renewable energies. Imagine how superior will battery technology be 10 years from now? How superior will solar technology be 10, 20 years from now? So I can foresee uh, hyper uh, intelligent, uh, well, robots that are powered by uh, sun power with ultra efficient solar cells and amazing battery technology. And it would literally change the fabric of society. And we've seen this before. We saw this when the Industrial Revolution came about. And prior to that, everybody was a farmer. Everybody worked on farms. 
Industrial Revolution comes about, everybody moves into the cities. So that was a huge change in terms of how the entire world worked, right? I think now about 4% of people are farming. And I think when AI comes of age, whatever that is, I would imagine 10, 20 years, who knows? Things will change in a big way. So we, you know, my thesis on that is, as long as we keep the politicians and the greedy people in check, I'm not saying all politicians are greedy, but as long as we keep, we're a fair society, you know, what are you going to do, for instance, when you have all these self-driving vehicles hit the road? They're coming out. They'll be out within the next few years, you know, if not next year or a year after. And you're starting to see it already in the oil sands up in Alberta, Canada. I'm from Canada. Uh, some of the big oil sands pr producers, they have now ordered robotic trucks, these massive trucks uh, that are controlled now through, um, you know, they're self-driving trucks, essentially, and they're controlled through a robotic technology. I don't, I don't know all the details in terms of the tech, but point is, now with these giant robotic trucks, all these jobs, and apparently it's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of jobs, not more, they're gone. These drivers used to make 200000 a year, 250000 a year, driving around these big uh, oil trucks. They're not going to have those jobs anymore because they bought these trucks from Japan that are self-driving. And a lot of jobs are uh, driving jobs. So imagine Uber cars, taxis that are just self-driving. And in fact, self-driving cars, once they figure out all the, all, all the, uh, all the details, they're gonna be far safer. The roads are gonna be far safer than they are today because you know I just had a, a little accident, a little fender bender recently. And it's because of a couple of, a couple of bad judgments. A guy in front of me sped up and then braked immediately and I sped up and I didn't have time to brake. And it was my fault for not giving him enough distance. And it was his fault for breaking like a, like a loser while we're, you know. Anyway, but the point is, this was a human error, two, two human errors, if you will, that if you had self-driving cars, there wouldn't have been that accident. So what does this mean? When you have um, AI coupled with robotics, coupled with highly uh, efficient renewable energy, I think solar will probably be the, the end result. You know, I'm thinking 10 years down the line. Uh, imagine you get these AI working on uh, developing ultra-efficient solar cells. So what does that do? It changes the whole society again. So I wouldn't be so concerned about your coding. Um, at that point in time, you know, I know it's going to sound silly, but, you know, as long as we, you know, everybody's reasonable, uh, we could be a you know, society of slackers, really, because when you have these three elements, robotics, AI, renewable energy that's uh, very efficient, resources will literally be unlimited. You know, the reason people work, the reason people strive, is, you know, a lot of people, do, most people do it, well, a lot of people do it to, to uh, you, know, you know, for food, uh, clothing, and, uh, and housing, right? And if you have robotics, and all the three elements I just mentioned, then, then this, these things will literally become unlimited. And the whole idea, let's talk about it up here in Canada on the federal level, this whole idea of the basic income comes into place, right? Where everybody uh, gets a basic income. And why not? If there's unlimited resources, essentially, robots are doing the work. You don't have to drill for energy much because you've got ultra-efficient solar. You've got AI figuring out diseases and stuff like this. Humans could uh, do other things. Like it's kind of like the Star Trek thing. And I'm not one of these utopian guys. I'm actually a pretty cynical guy, but that's the logical conclusion to it. What are you going to do with all these people who are not capable of uh, creating stories or, or high levels of thinking? You know, the, the truck drivers and, 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 and the laborers when these robots come into play over the next 10, 20 years. What are you going to do with these people? Well, I think you just do basic income and you let them pursue their things. Why not? If the world is ultra efficient. Um, why not just, you know, do that? But I don't think that's, you know, 10, 20 years away. And, uh, you know, sometimes people get excited about technology. They overestimate how quickly technologies will evolve. Like I've seen that in, like, uh, if you look at videos in the 50s, if you watch these futurist uh, news clips in the 50s, they thought everybody was going to have spaceships by today, you know? So, We'll see what happens, but from my experience over the last 20 years with programming and coding, to get back to that, um, it's going to take a little bit of time. 
uh, before uh, I would be so concerned about AI because of all the complexities. Remember, the hardest thing about coding is not writing functions and classes and uh, arrays. And uh, the hardest thing about coding is actually architecture. It's the big picture, figuring out how to best uh, do something. Uh, what's the best approach? Which, which language to use? Which framework to, to use? Which, within the framework and the language that you choose, you know, you know, JavaScript Node, uh, ExpressJS, or uh, uh, Python Django, PHP Laravel, wh whatever you choose, depending on the job, uh, then there's the architecture in that. How do you best set up? How do you best design it? I'm doing, I'm faced with that right now with, uh, with one of my apps. We're looking at how to best um, deal with an older code base. And we went to microservices to extend its life. I talked about that in another video. So I wouldn't be so concerned about that. Yes, coding will change and evolve over time. That is for sure. But the, it just, you know, we'll just be doing different things for the next 10, 20 years. So I won't be concerned. And when AI comes about, if and when it comes about in a big way, it's just going to be a game changer for the entire society. And I think in a very positive way. So I wouldn't be so concerned. AI, uh, robotics, and uh, unlimited renewables through the sun, I would imagine would be, I'm not saying the technology is here now. I think that would just change society. That's my thinking about it. So, you know. I've, uh, and uh, so what do I know, you know? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end this video with something I, I thought about doing for a long time now. I'm going to introduce my favorite albums, as in music. Um, and this is old stuff, I guess, for many of you. But a lot of the artists that you know of today, that you follow today, they're probably inspired by these people. They probably listen to these people, or at least the, the artists that inspired them listen to these people. So I'm going to uh, start just mentioning some of the top albums of all time. From, you know, of course, you just go to Rolling Stone, but from my personal collection. And uh, that's it. That's how I'll end it. So we'll start with this. It's a, I don't know if you can see that. Ziggy Stardust, Spiders from Mars. Um, yeah, yeah. This is David Bowie. He died recently, maybe five, six months ago. So I figured it would be a good place to start. Fantastic album. Uh, one of the seminal albums out there. It's uh, it's a bit of a story album in a way, but it, it's very cool music and David Bowie had his unique style. So if you're looking for new music, you want something different, try David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust, Spiders from Mars. Fantastic. Now, this is vinyl, right? Uh, what you, find, you may find curious is this thing here. This is called the Japanese OB. It's like a sash with Japanese information. So I, I got a Japanese pressing of a vinyl album. Why do I get a Japanese pressing? Because audiophile nerds like myself to a certain extent, I'm not a super crazy audiophile nerd, but I, you know, I appreciate better quality sound. They go after Japanese pressings because the Japanese uh, were more, more, they were more meticulous about their pressing of vinyl. So the quality was better. Um, I won't get into that now, but uh, yeah, so Japanese pressings, vinyl. This sounds like much better than CD or MP3 or Spotify, but you have to have good speakers to hear the difference. Otherwise, forget about it. Um, that said, vinyl is great. I love vinyl. I have lots of vinyl. But, you know, if you get uh, HD 24-bit music uh, digital files, they're as good as HD. I've done the comparison. So anyway... Ziggy Stardust, Spiders from Mars, if you're looking for something to listen to, you got to get into it. It's like a, it's a concept album. You know, there's some hits on there for sure, but the whole concept album, and it's really well recorded, some nice sound to it. So it's something to listen to. All right, we'll talk soon.